Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Two Daves and a Doc and Guest. And this week, we have the pleasure of having Dr. Ashlyn O'Neill from Arc Labs. So, Ashlyn, welcome to the uh, wonderful association of whatever the hell this is. So, <laughs> if you want to go ahead and give us a little introduction to yourself, tell us what you do, what you're about, and... Super. Go from there. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much, Dave. Uh, so my name is Ashling Ashling O'Neill, and I'm manager of the Arc Labs Research and Innovation Centre in WIT. So that's our business incubator for the institute. Um, I did my PhD. Actually, graduated four years ago yesterday um, with a PhD in entrepreneurship from Waterford Institute of Technology. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, it was it was a it was an amazing journey, and, and like that, I was actually based out in Arc Labs for for the the PhD. So. My relationship with the centre began uh, quite quite a significant amount of time ago, um, and I suppose that's where I really got my love for startups and all things um, entrepreneurship, which is, I suppose, how I have followed the path to to where I am now. Um, my PhD topic was looking at what motivates entrepreneurs to engage with learning networks to develop their enterprises in regional economies. So I looked at learning networks. We, we were part of a project, the SLNIW project, which just rolls off the tongue, um, but stands for Sustainable Learning Networks in Ireland and Wales. And we formed six learning networks across the two regions as part of that program. Um, so just as a kind of a lens of comparative analysis, we looked at splitting the groups by gender. So we had an all female network, an all male network, and a mixed uh, gender group in each country. Um, for that project and that was a really interesting exercise so like as we were setting up um, for this interview we were having a quick chat um, and Colin mentioned to me about referencing Network Ireland and actually it's, it's quite an interesting story how I became involved with Network Ireland um, because like that I, I wasn't a female entrepreneurship researcher that wasn't my specific focus but within my pro project it was really really interesting to see the way that the female networks formed in both regions um, and I suppose the, the amount of value and um, the, the impact that they made from the get-go, right? It was really, really powerful to see. Um, so like that, as I said, this time four years ago, I was just graduating um, from my PhD and I heard that Network Ireland were interested in opening a branch in Waterford. And I was like, well, I better put my money where my mouth is and get involved here. Um, so I ended up being president of the Waterford branch for 2017 and 2018. And as president of a branch, you automatically take a seat on the national executive team. And that was really, really interesting for me, um, like that to, to kind of have that strategic overview. So Network Ireland is a really um, long established organization established since 1983 um, for the personal and professional development of women. And really, I suppose, supporting women to achieve their most satisfying careers, whatever that uh, may be. And um, yeah, so so it was really great to, to take that, that position um, and like that quite quickly then became very interested in a, a more significant leadership role in the organization. So I'm, I'm vice president this year and I'll take over as president of Network Ireland, the national organization um, from January. So, so that's really, really exciting and like that to see I suppose how women can learn together and, and from each other and, and support one another in that goal of achieving their most satisfying careers, whether that is in entrepreneurship or the professions or the arts, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, so I, I don't know, should I stop talking now and let you guys ask a question? <laughs> no, keep no, going. That was, that, was, that was great. No, but you mentioned a really interesting point in there when you said is your work was on entrepreneurial learning networks. You didn't specify on female entrepreneurial networks, but you kind of, through the lens of your kind of doctoral work, it led you towards that. And it led you towards, you know, significant involvement in that space afterwards. So, I mean, I think all of us here share that same kind of common connection, as in we've talked either industrial work, in our research work, and just followed its natural course. And, you know, that unfortunately is kind of, all too rare in historically in academia you know you set your plan at the beginning you follow your straight line course and then you come out at the end so i mean how did you find that process and how did you find that kind of pivot you know pivot startup word there we need to include that pivot along the course of the research into that like was it was it an easy path did you plan it did you at one stage make a decision to say i'm going to follow this or was it does it just occur 
Yeah. So, OK, I obviously don't fall into that, uh, that, that natural progression of things. And I, I, I like to give myself a challenge, you know. Um, so my background, like my, my undergraduate and postgraduate um, qualifications are in languages and marketing. Right. And I had done my MSc in marketing practice in Smurfit. Um, in 2008 and that um, master's program is run on an action learning methodology right which I loved and it was really really interesting for me a a really interesting way to learn where again like quite similar to learning networks you bring learning sets together they're called and you have a facilitator that that work through key themes that the the group work on together Um, and I found that a really really interesting way of um, of learning and I yeah, so that was 2008. And if you all recall, the um, the bottom fell out of the country very, very um, efficiently. And I, I had been looking at a number of different career paths. Now, another really interesting element of the master's program in Smurfit was that we were very much encouraged to engage with as many mentors as we could. And again, within the startup world, we know how important mentorship is as you're looking to develop anything, right? Um, so I had been discussing with um, a couple of my mentors about going down the, the PhD path, um, but I just hadn't intended on doing it so quickly. Um, and like that, it was early, early 2009, uh, maybe it was actually the end of 2008. And my dad, as dads always do, was like, oh, Ashling, like I saw this, I saw this scholarship in, in Waterford and like, look, I know you were kind of thinking of leaving it a little while and, you know, but I mean, sure, look, why don't you do the interview and see, see if, if you get the scholarship, like we can, you know, talk then and you can move home. Now that didn't last. I love my parents dearly, but yeah, it didn't last for me to, uh, to, to we'll live send them a copy when, of when this, that, by the way. <laughs> when that process <laughs> happened. Um, but I did move just 200 meters away, which was hilarious. Um, but it was really interesting, right? Because I started the PhD program looking at, I wanted to develop a new model of learning, right? So actually it wasn't the, 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 the field of entrepreneurship that I was specifically looking at, but the, the kind of, I suppose, subjects that I was working with were the entrepreneurs. And very quickly I became so involved um, and committed to, to the entrepreneurs we were working with. And I was like, wow, like this is, this is so interesting. And like that, really interested in the the kind of psychological processes behind it so I did a full pivot right like so I spent a year developing so it's interesting we were chatting at the start about Dave having to revise his thesis plan I spent a whole year working to um one thesis plan and then went oh no absolutely not that's not what I'm going to do and completely revised it and that's where the the motivations of entrepreneurs came in now the process of the of the PhD was like it was really, really uh, interesting. Um, and like I said, I, I became really, really committed to all of the, uh, the subjects. It's, it feels gross to call them subjects, right? Because they, they, were, they were almost like family to me, you know, and these people that, that I worked with. And I was in the very fortunate position that I, the SLNIW project was funded by Interreg, right? So it was an Ireland-Wales programme. And so I had funding for travel. Um, and then the Irish Research Council funded my PhD, which was great. Um, And I suppose a a really strong statement of the value of the work. But back in those days, us in the humanities and social sciences were quite discriminated against in that we didn't get a travel budget because sure, like, why would we need to uh, spend going? uh, Where would we be going? You know, who wants to hear about what we're doing? And so at the time, ERCSET, so the Science, Engineering and Technology, they used to get an additional Um, budget but we didn't get it in in the the humanities and social sciences but because of the original relationship to the interreg project I was supported to to continue with my travel so I used to spend a week every month in Wales with the Welsh networks and I had all of the time with the Irish networks and I just yeah I was so greedy right I was like oh gosh I want to learn more I want to learn more I want to learn more and I ended up like with, so I was, I, I you know, oh, I'm going to do a mixed method study, which basically means I can do anything I everything. want. You can do whatever you want do for as long as you want in any stage. Yeah, exactly. Key, key word to remember there, Pollard, right? <laughs> mixed methods. <laughs> so three years, I like studied these networks. I, I observed their meetings. I did interviews at intervals with, I drowned. I absolutely drowned in data. And 
I became really, really stuck. It was really, really, um, it was really, really interesting. Like there's so much to learn from how badly I did it right. Like stay focused when right. you're doing your PhD. Yeah, right. And I remember, I remember the arguments with my PhD supervisor. I have an amazing relationship with my PhD supervisor and that I, I, I cannot value that enough, right? Like because he was so committed to to my work and and like that we continue to work together like we we wrote together just last year um again about the, the female entrepreneurship experience but like that we had all these arguments where he was like ashling you're going to present like less than 10 percent of your data i was like what like yeah. i was so invested i was so bought in like i think the first I think the first draft, right, of my findings chapters that I sent to Bill, bear in mind, right, like you've got your literature review, your methodology, like all of this other stuff as well. My first draft of my findings chapters were 150 pages. He wow. was like, no, Ashling, like, <laughs> no, there's no examiner that's going to want to read this. We need to distill and distill and distill. And like, that was, for me, that was a huge challenge was that letting go and like saying, OK, yes, I need to stay really, really close to the question. Right. Like so, again, it's, it's really being committed to what you're looking at, but also appreciating that like this is step one. Right. On your like research career or your research journey. Um, and it's, it's, it's actually again, it's really interesting the way that these things go, because technically I moved out of research. So when I finished the, the PhD, I went, uh, I spent a couple of months um, postdocing. Th those were really interesting months. So on uh, Bill O'Gorman's eDigi region project, which was, yeah, really, really interesting project to join. But I came in to sort of basically write up three books for them in less than six months. And it, oh, gosh. Like, I mean, amazing to have that right on my CV or whatever, but it was, yeah, I nearly Stress. lost my mind. Stress. Very stressful, Stress. but super, super interesting. Super, super interesting. Um, and yeah, so I, I spent some time postdocing there, but then I kind of realized that in my person, I was seeking a lot more security than the, the kind of research environment could afford me. And I, I kind of moved over to like, so sometimes people call it like, you know, the dark side of research administration. There's so many um, former researchers that work in research administration and management. Um, and I do think a lot of the time that is dictated by that kind of desire for security. Um, so I worked as well, reality. Yeah, exactly. Like I wanted to get a mortgage. I wanted to have somewhere to live. And thank goodness, you know, in lockdown, you know, to have an, a nice little space to be able to live in. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's one of those kind of things that that drove my decision making. It's a human thing. Right. And um, so I worked as the national program officer for the Office of Research and Innovation in WIT. And that was oh, that was a brilliant role. Right. And I'm so glad that I did that. So I spent two years doing that. And what it meant is that like, so for anyone who's familiar with WIT, Arc Labs is based out on our West campus. So our knowledge and innovation campus. Um, so it's kind of quite removed. Like, so it's only postgraduate, like level nine, level 10 researchers, and then academic researchers and um, startups that are based out there, right? Like, so you're kind of removed from the other schools within the Institute. And there's really interesting stuff going on in WIT that I just had no idea, because why, right, why, why would I have known, you know, so it was brilliant to work in that role, and it meant then that I was working with all of the different schools and departments, and getting to know and build those internal relationships, um, which has been hugely beneficial as I've moved back out to Arc Labs, right, so like, I'm really, really interested in diversity and representation, and in the entrepreneurship space, it is very homogenous, right? Yeah. Um, we we have such such Example low levels of diversity. The, the air diverse host base here, you know, as well. It's unfortunate, <laughs> and it's a severe disadvantage to every space. Diversity is everything. You don't, you do not yeah. get diversity of opinion when everyone is the same. It just doesn't happen. No. It's it's impossible. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, so. I'm really committed. So I started in role in Arc Labs in January 2019. Um, and like that, look, I mean, like, like our entire sector, but the Institute of Technology sector particularly, like funds are limited, right? So I was like, I'd love a female entrepreneurship program. I'd love this. I'd love that. I was like, okay, I'm not going to get everything. So what's the best 
um, approach to take here. So what I have really focused my efforts in on is developing our youth entrepreneurship and student entrepreneurship programs. And like that, how we met is through the, the Techstars Startup Weekend. Um, like I, I put Arc Labs forward to host that. That was supposed to happen in April. And Colin Daniel just Cole. sent me a message. So like, other, like, he was like, can you believe that we thought that was going to happen? Like, because we literally didn't cancel it until like mid-March, no. right? Like we <laughs> really, we were just like, oh, <laughs> it's just yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so so it's really important to me, right, that we that we work from that youth level, right, to kind of like I'm saying normalize entrepreneurship as if it's something like dirty, you know, but it's, it's to bring those entrepreneurial thought processes from an earlier stage and to, I suppose, make um, careers in entrepreneurship a real uh, possibility for, for people so that they that it's just naturally in their their scope of thought when they're assessing what they're going to do with their lives. Um, so that's been brilliant then, like, so kind of rolling back to the, the, the role in the research office, like as we've looked at developing our undergraduate programs for student entrepreneurship, so we do different student boot camps and like different sprints um, that, that we do, do to support the entrepreneurship efforts. Having those internal networks within WIT has been brilliant to get people on board with the program and, and like that to kind of, I suppose, welcome me to their class groups to, to kind of share the, the gospel of entrepreneurship. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's been really, really interesting. And so like, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't think, well, certainly my life hasn't taken a, a linear path. It's kind of nice little um, detours along the way, but they always bring me somewhere really, really interesting. Like here. The most interesting ones normally do. They really do. Yeah. Kind of like, again, to reference back to your mixed methods is it was emergent. That was my word, emergent design, which is amazing. You know, it's, it's emerging. Everything's emerging. You don't really know what you've done until you've finished it. And that's what startups yeah. do. They don't know what they have until it's done. Yeah, So exactly. To your researchers and entrepreneurship and, you know, you're trying to bridge that gap a little bit be between those. For someone who is researching at the moment and they're maybe hearing some of these words for the first time and they're maybe even now just considering just from listening to, to you talking about your experience, you know, oh, actually, I better go and look that up. You know, what, what kind of skills are they developing now over the course of their PhD that, you know, they can bring into that entrepreneurial world so that they can say, okay, well, I have a bit of confidence in myself to be able to go and explore yeah. that as an option for myself. It's, it's really cool, right? Like, so over the summer, um, you know, we were all still um, working from home and we uh, developed a kind of an entrepreneurship challenge using the, the, the Techstars methodology and, and using that kind of sprint idea, but bringing it into a different manner with a group of our postgraduate researchers from the Ocular Therapeutics Research Group, right, in, in WIT, so like pure scientists. And it was just such a wonderful experience to present them with kind of different models of thinking, right? Um, and they all really, really enjoyed that. And that kind of flexibility in thought and that capacity to be creative, right? Like whether they ever develop their own venture or not, to be able to think that way is such an asset to any organization. And as organizations are becoming more forward thinking, um, I know not, not, not always at a pace that we would like, um, but, you know, we, we see that um, value being placed on critical thinkers, innovative thinkers, those people that have that kind of flexibility. Um, and it, it gives you a real keen uh, approach to problem solving, right? Um, and it's such, yeah, it's, it's, it's so, so valuable to do that. Um, so like uh, as a kind of a follow on from that, we've managed to um, bring to life uh, an entrepreneurship innovation and commercialization module for um, our level nine and level 10 postgraduate researchers. So uh, James O'Sullivan, Dr. James O'Sullivan, our technology transfer manager in WIT is leading that. And I'm working with him on that. Actually, we're doing our kind of pitches with the, the students tomorrow. But again, it's like giving, giving these transferable skills that when you've got that capacity to think that way and to work in that, that kind of manner, you know, everything becomes a little bit easier, whether you do 
apply them to your own venture or even like you know so when when I, in, in our labs I would have an advisory group like a board that I would um have as a sounding board for kind of different ideas and you know some of the feedback that I got to the youth entrepreneurship um agenda it's like gosh like Ashling, like what are the metrics here and I'm like mm-hmm. well we need to be comfortable that <laughs> we not, might not see the metrics for many years Yes, we might we might get a couple of people that come straight in and, and set something up. But like for me, what's more important is for these people to pursue whatever careers that they want to pursue. And like that, accept that it's a journey, right? Like so just because they take a, a, a job in a corporate world or an academic environment doesn't mean that that's where they have to stay. Right. And I want a scenario where by maybe someone that I worked with when they were in first year, like did an entrepreneurship boot camp with us in our clubs and went off, like did their finished their degree, maybe went into industry for like five years, 10 years, 15 years, and saw a problem, right? Like, so we're always in the startup world talking about problems to solve. And that's the really important thing, right? Like, so if you're solving a big enough problem, you're going to be successful. And I would love that scenario where someone comes back maybe a decade later going like, you probably don't remember me. Like I did a program (laughs) here and I know now that this is where I can come when I have that big idea. Um, So that's kind of, for me, the most important thing, you know, like is, is giving those skills that like that, it gives people choices, right? Like wherever they decide to go. I know we're up on time. So I just want to thank you very much for spending the, this quick amount of time with us today. If there's one thing that you can leave us with in, in, in your mind, I know it's only one, not, not a compendium, but one thing that you can leave those of us who are in process right now of, of, of this wonderful journey of a PhD, what would that be? And then we bid you adieu. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose to try and stay focused, you know, like, so the, the kind of biggest learning for me was, that that kind of piece of getting just so greedy with all of the data because I was like give me all of the data and then that that nearly was the end of me right like and and for for a period of time I really genuinely wanted to give up right and like just walk away from the mess that I had made and it wasn't a mess right like you know but it was just that kind of making sense piece so like spending that time And I know, Colin, as you said, you know, these things mold and change and they absolutely do. And like it could literally change up to like a week before a submission, small parts, obviously, (laughs) but like to to kind of try and really distill and be really focused in the questions that you're setting yourself for for the project and staying true to those. Like so in any in any light bulb moment where you're like, oh, it'd be so cool if I did X, like pull yourself back and say, right, do I need to do that though? Like, is that something for me to put into my postdoc application? Yeah. Right. Like to, to kind of stay, to stay focused on what it is that you need to get your PhD first and then use that as a starting point for further work. Well, thank you for those words of wisdom. I know I have a problem with staying focused right now, so <laughs> it's very <laughs> apropos. I, I do too. Like I'm, I'm like that person is like, you know, do as I say, not as I do, because I actually like, I, I, I recognize that that was really, really wrong, but I still did it. And if you do you're it, in the club, like, you're, in, you're in a group now of people that have, don't know what the words no mean. So yeah, exactly. Say yes to everything <laughs> and build up a huge pile of work to do. So you're among family. Yeah, meaningful diversions <laughs> and non-linear paths, I think, was the last one that we did along this. So with that, oh, Dr. Man. Ashlyn O'Neill from Arc Labs, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. I wish you well and so everything else that's going on, and I'm sure our paths are going to cross again. So, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and I best know. of luck to everyone with their studies. Take care. Yeah, thanks.